Yes, prepare yourself for tears. We will be talking about Cory and Leah today. It's no surprise that I've been rewatching Glee and this series was requested and I know that they're doing a Dark Side of Glee show coming out soon. So I just thought let's remember some happier times because I did indeed absolutely love them together and they loved each other. I mean, come on. Obviously a little warning for this series, substance issues are going to be discussed. If that doesn't make you comfortable, protect yourself, don't watch this. All right, birth charts. Would it surprise you to know that Leah Michelle is a Virgo? She also has a Cancer Moon, a Leo Mercury, a Libra Venus, and a Capricorn Mars. They did not say her rising sign online. However, I'm just gonna say that I wanna guess Taurus. Corey is a Taurus Sun, a Capricorn Moon, a Gemini Mercury, an Aries Venus, and a Libra Mars. And I do love a Virgo Taurus pairing. I really do. I don't have exact dates, but we are starting in early 2009 when Glee began filming their pilot season. Leah was playing Rachel, who was apparently written just for her by creator Ryan Murphy. So if you've ever thought, they seem like the same person. Yes. And Corey was playing Finn, and this is where they first met, and obviously their characters were meant to be love interests from the start. She said that, from the minute I met Corey, I was like, this is the most handsome man I've ever seen in my whole life. And on Corey's part, he said that he was very nervous, when he met her because she was very talented, she had already been on Broadway before this, and he didn't have a lot of acting experience up to this point. However, despite the fact that I just said that Corey was the most handsome man that she'd ever seen in her whole life when she met him, Leah was actually not available. She was in a relationship with Theo Stockman at the time. He is an actor both on Broadway and in Hollywood as well. And yes, I will say it, he's looking pretty silly right now, but that's not on him, okay? How was he to know, you know? On May 19th of 2009, the first episode of Glee aired. The rest of the season would not come out until the fall of 2009, but you only needed one episode to know that they were meant to be. Although she is pictured here with Mr. Schuster and she did date Matthew Morrison before they started filming this show. But let's just pretend that that's not there. Immediately rumors began circulating that she was dating Corey, but of course those were quickly debunked because she was still dating Theo. However, Leah said in an interview later on that they briefly dated at the beginning of Glee, but no one really caught on. I don't know what time period she's talking about, but perhaps a bit of overlap. On November 1st of 2009, the Glee cast went to go watch another show and Glamour caught Leah and asked her about Corey Monteith. And she said that that's her character, it's not her. Even though that character was written specifically for her. But she is, she is different from her character, okay? She is technically different. And then she also said that he was like her brother. Mm-hmm. Corey, on the other hand, was rumored to be dating the one and only Taylor Swift in March of 2010. I think everybody really just wanted them to be together because he looks like such a nice guy. And didn't Taylor need a nice guy at that point? Yes, but he said that they were just friends. Skipping ahead in 2010 a little bit, in November, Leah and Corey were on the cover of Teen Vogue together. Not as a couple, as an on-screen couple. And the way that this article about them begins with referencing the hit of the summer, California Girls by Katy Perry featuring Snoop Dogg. Ugh, what a time. And the interviewer said that the two actors have even less in common than their in love alter egos, but also was clear that they have great chemistry in real life too. And the entire interview, they're making like little jokes and comments to each other. So you really get the sense, even in print, that they are incredibly close. And this was pointed out by the interviewer and they did ask them if it was strange to be a couple in the show. And Leah said, we're such good friends that we've passed that level of weirdness. Corey farts in front of me. But they also asked Leah if her boyfriend ever got jealous. And she said, no, because he understands because he also is an actor. They're just acting. Maybe you just don't get it. Um, if my boyfriend ever took a photo like this with a girl, I think I would actually cry. And Corey said that he wasn't dating anyone at the time and that he was very private with his dating life in general. And they did joke about like, ha ha, the entire cast is hooking up. And they were really joking, but then they were not joking when they said that Naya Rivera and Mark Salling actually did briefly date. I wish I could say something about that, um, but this video would immediately get flagged due to the profanity that I would spew. In June of 2011, Leah did an interview with Glamour. You can see they're really pushing that Rachel Berry image on this cover. And 
when they asked her about onset romance, she said, I mean, for me, if it was going to happen with anybody, it would have happened with Corey. It's giving girl best friend that you do need to worry about. And she did talk about how cute she thought he was when they first met and that ultimately now that he is a great friend and like my big brother, famous last words, am I right? Unless it's actually your big brother, in which case, I'm so sorry. And she also said that she was glad nothing had ever happened because it would have ruined something if it didn't work out. In April of 2012, Corey and Leah were seen in Cabo together, just the two of them. You simply cannot be in a couple in the 2010s and not have beach photos taken of you together. It's, it's actually illegal, I believe. And we also got a tweet from Leah during that vacation where she said, I just saw a really hot 6'3 Canadian with a tribal armband hanging by the pool. So happy. On May 2nd of 2012, Page Six was reporting that they were moving in together. This is given that we still don't even have confirmation that they're actually dating at that point. And in this article, a source said that Leah had never felt more sure about anything and was planning their future. However, they made it seem like Corey wasn't quite on the same page and that he was kind of just going along with it. And they even said that he was telling people that she smothers him. Who knows if that's really true though. I feel like that kind of stuff would be written about them regardless of if there was actually any evidence of it, just because they are a high maintenance, low maintenance pair. And I think the media likes to push that image anyways, and also say that the woman is just so obsessed and the man is being smothered. Okay. And between May and July of 2012, we saw them together multiple times, including when they were kissing in a hockey game and looking really adorable. These were just happier times. September 13th of 2012, Glee season four began. So by this point, Corey is part of a hit show. Everybody knows his name in the acting world. However, according to his mother, Hollywood was just too much and it just wasn't good for him. I don't know when he actually started using again, but I'm just telling you this information now because it was going on in the background for a while and I'm not really going to reference it for quite a while, so. And his mother has since said that some of his issues with substances she thinks continued because of the fame. And specifically that it was too superficial for him. He was just too grounded and his heart too intact. He couldn't become hard enough. And she also mentioned that he was stressed because he wanted to get out of that world, but he couldn't because he had two years left on his contract and substances were his way of checking out. Keeping that in mind, November 25th of 2012, we get this picture of Leah snowboarding with Corey on Twitter. They were in Canada, I believe, so possibly visiting his family as well. I would say probably. Now, she did know that Corey had a history of substance use and she was worried about him. But as she has said numerous times, that was an aspect of him, not all of him. On December 6th of 2012, Corey went on Ellen. Side note, his intro music was a One Direction song. They could have used one of his mini covers that he did during Glee, but no. And Ellen told him that lots of fans wanted to know about him and Leah, and he was super upfront and said, yeah, we're a couple, of course. It's really sweet to hear him talk about her, honestly. So June 24th of 2011, Corey did an interview with Parade Magazine. And this was a very vulnerable chat where he opened up about his issues with substances over the years. According to Corey, it started around the age of 13 and then it just got worse and worse from there. He said that by 16, he had attended 12 different schools, including alternative programs for troubled teens. And at that point, he was really off the deep end with the substances and ended up dropping out of high school. And he talked about the intervention and then rehab that he did when he was 19, but apparently it was not actually effective in deterring him after he left rehab. However, he said that he did end up getting clean after he was called out by a family member for stealing from them and the options were get charged or get clean and he chose get clean. That's great. And he did begin acting after he got clean, but he was very, very clear in this interview that I don't want kids to think it's okay to drop out of school and do substances and they'll be famous actors too. But for those people who might give up, get real about what you want and go after it. If I can, anyone can. And regardless of where this story ends, that is a great message from Corey if you are struggling. We discover on September 19th of 2011 that it is curtains for Leah and Theo, they are done. And for reference, we were in about season three of Glee at this point. Supposedly it was not a dramatic breakup, the relationship just ran its course and they were still friends. And immediately, as you may have guessed, everybody was team Corey. We were all rooting for him. 
whether he was actually interested or not. We all just assumed he was. And in late 2011 is when she said that they officially started dating. Now recall, there may have been some overlap between Theo and Corey in early 2009. There may have also been some overlap here. Who's to say? But moving on, she said, one day we just looked at each other and we were like, you wanna do this? And we knew. I think it is also possible that she could have dumped Theo for him, just saying. By February of 2012, already rumors were coming again that they were dating, but we had no confirmation. However, in March, somebody was talking to Us Weekly, I don't know who, and they said that Corey was really good for Leah and that she's much less miserable these days. That is so me and my boyfriend. Anyways, apparently the long distance with her ex just wasn't really working out and had been weighing on her. She's not really a long distance girly. Um, and this was much better. Also in March of 2012, on the 24th was the GLAAD Awards and Corey hosted with Naya. Leah was not seen there, but they were seen at the airport together like two days later. So it seems like she was there the whole time. In December of 2012, Leah did an interview with Marie Claire. This is a little bit unrelated, but they did bring up the diva rumors in this article. And she said that she is a very outspoken person, but that those weren't true and that she really doesn't care what people think about her anymore. As you probably know, those rumors are very much still alive as well as other allegations and such. However, I probably will talk about those at some point. It's just not gonna be in this series. This is about her and Corey, not about her. So we'll leave that for another time. But the point is she did talk about Corey in this interview and she said that he makes her feel like she can do anything. For the first time in my life, I feel really, really settled and happy. I feel like the luckiest girl in the world. And then at the beginning of the new year in 2013, we see her and her family, as well as Corey, on a trip together in Hawaii. March 19th of 2013, Leah was seen wearing a Corey necklace. I want to wear his initials on a chain round my neck, chain round my neck, not because he owns me, but because he really knows me, which is more than they can say. Okay, I'm done, sorry. Moving on, March 31st of 2013, Corey went to rehab. It was his decision, although many sources said that Leah was a major factor in that. And there was also reports that multiple Glee cast members had held an intervention for him and it had gone well. So that was probably also a contributing factor. Leah was super supportive and she said that she was grateful and proud he made this decision. And although he had said previously that he had had issues with substances, I feel like this is the point where the vast majority of the public really found out about it, or at least found out that it was current, not just in the past. And a month later, in April of 2013, Corey got out of rehab. Now, there have been discussions that 30 days was not nearly long enough for him, considering how long he had been using. And while I tend to agree with that, I think that would have been very difficult to do, considering they were in the middle of filming a season for Glee at the time. So to up and leave your job for a month is already kind of a big ask, and I'm sure he felt very guilty about that, let alone asking for even more time. And remember that while Glee had made him famous, he was also very new to the acting world. I'm sure he didn't wanna look unprofessional and he was under contract with Glee. So there may have been stipulations there. And lastly, there's always the thought that he didn't want people to really know how bad it was and that going for more than 30 days or admitting at the end of 30 days that you're not quite ready to get clean would be very shameful for him or he'd be embarrassed or feel like he's letting people down. Regardless, he was only in rehab for a month. And just about a week later, him and Leah went on vacation to Mexico together. And I do think it seemed at the time to the public like he was doing pretty well. So we have to talk about some rumors that were going around about how things might have been in June of 2013. Because it was said that Leah and Corey had broken up sometime around June. And from what I've read, if this was true, it was more of a break because they really did have polar opposite lives and styles, etc. That was like their couple thing, just like Rachel and Finn. And I say all this because Leah was in Mexico with some friends shortly before Corey's passing. And this is perhaps why. This is why some people say that she was there. Regardless of what the reality was, it does seem like they were still very much in love. And frankly, I don't think a vacation with friends necessarily means that you're broken up. And all the reports said that they knew they'd get back together soon anyways. So I'm not sure it really matters ultimately. And then on July 13th of 2013, Corey passed away at the age of 31. 
He was found in his hotel in Vancouver and the cause was an OD from the H and alcohol. And ODs actually do happen pretty commonly after rehab just because people are used to their previous tolerance and they kind of overestimate their current tolerance and how much they can take and that can lead to lethal dosages. I also read an article that was talking about how rehab can sometimes provide a false sense of security in believing that everything is okay and they've recovered so they can handle doing substances in moderation again. But usually that is not the case. And supposedly his last words to Leah were, if you say so. Leah was told later that night and of course, she absolutely lost her mind with grief as you would imagine. And sources were telling the tabloids that Leah didn't realize that he was using again. It was also said that lots of people in his life, while they may have known that he had issues in the past and present, they didn't really know the full extent. And I remember at the time, it was definitely shocking for a lot of people, especially younger fans. I was a younger fan at the time, just because his character that he was portraying on TV that we saw most of the time was this super clean cut high schooler. And you just don't imagine that people might have personal struggles like that behind the scenes. After Leah found out, Jonathan Groff flew to be with her as soon as he heard. Those two are about as close as any best friends I can ever think of, so that makes perfect sense. And while some ODs are intentional, his mother was very clear that he didn't want to pass, he was looking forward to his future, and he had so much to live for. So Leah also called Kate Hudson shortly after Corey passed away. Kate had guest starred in Glee, and there was a ton of rumors when she did that her and Leah hated each other, and they were rivals, and they were jealous, and blah, 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 blah. All of those clearly weren't true because Kate actually let Rachel and her family stay with her while they were grieving because there was just paparazzi everywhere. Now, August 13th of 2013, Glee began filming again. They had been filming season five when he passed away, so they kind of had to consider what were they gonna do at that point. And the first episode that they filmed was a tribute episode to Corey. And Leah said that she felt like since they all lost Corey, as she said, not just her. There was no need to isolate herself from them and she never wanted to do that anyways. Of course, this was incredibly difficult, but she said that being on set is no more difficult than being at home and finding Corey's slippers under the bed. We had a life and a job together. It goes with you everywhere you go. You can't get away from grief. So I might as well be surrounded by the people I love and get to lean on them. And ultimately she said that she's very grateful that they filmed it because it needed to be something that felt real for me. And she has said that much of the dialogue are things that she really said and really felt at the time, which is just heartbreaking. And Ryan Murphy has since said that he thought that the show should have ended after that, but obviously that did not happen. They did have grief counselors on set, which was of course necessary. And multiple cast members struggled during these scenes, had to refilm scenes, had to redo bits of dialogue that they just like could not bring themselves to do in the moment. And I'm sure that it was a very cathartic experience and somewhat good for them to all feel those emotions together, but that has also got to be deeply traumatic. And if it sounds like I'm about to cry, <laughs> you're on to me. October 10th of 2013, the tribute episode titled The Quarterback aired. Ryan Murphy said that he watched it once and never again, and Leah has said that she has never watched it because if she doesn't watch it, it just kind of feels like Finn is still here and Corey too. On November 30th of 2013, Leah did an interview with Elle magazine. They talked about Corey and also her upcoming album, which is why we're about to see a lot of interviews. And she said that after Corey passed away, the album was pretty much finished, but she decided to add in another song for him, although he already had multiple songs on the album anyways. February 28th of 2014, Glamour posted an interview with Leah for the cover that she was about to be on. Obviously they talked about Corey and she said, I have this blank canvas in front of me, which is what my life can be. And that while that sounds like a good thing, it's also obviously extremely devastating because the reasoning is devastating. And she also talked about how happy she was with him, how serious their relationship was, that they really wanted to be together forever and that they had talked about children. And I know that a lot of people and even me before I filmed this thought that they were engaged at the time of his passing. 
but they actually were not. I think we kind of merged that with the Glee storyline. They were not, but they definitely thought they would be together forever. And as for potentially moving on, she said that she was under a Cory Monteith spell. Basically, she had on horse blinders for the boy, like nobody else, tunnel vision. And obviously now she has to move on and she knows she has to eventually, but it was gonna be a very slow process. And she knew ultimately she wouldn't be alone forever though. February 28th of 2014, which also the day that Leah released her album Louder. And while she had wanted to make an album for a long time, it definitely seems like both Glee and Corey were big inspirations for her to finally go for it. Specifically, she said that she does everything now, not just for me, but for him. According to Leah, Corey's favorites on the album were Battlefield and Burn With You, and Your Mine is about her and Corey. She wrote two of the songs after his passing with Sia, actually. One was Cannonball and one was If You Say So, which obviously was his last words to her. Normally, I would want to share some lyrics with you and analyze them together, but I simply can't do that without crying on camera, so we are swiftly moving on. In March of 2014, Leah was in Seventeen Magazine, and talking about Corey, she said, I only have happy memories of Corey. He was not his addiction. Unfortunately, it won, but that wasn't who he was. Corey made me feel like a queen every day. From the minute he said, I'm your boyfriend, I loved every day, and I thank him for being the best boyfriend and making me feel so beautiful. And she also said that she feels a responsibility to keep memory and light of Corey, who was the most amazing person. In May, Leah published her own book. And I say this because in the book, she mentions that she kept this Finn necklace from Glee. One year after he passed, Leah posted this photo of them on Twitter with a tribute to him. And she has posted a tribute to him every year since. And what you see here is a tattoo that Leah got. She got this in April of 2016 and she posted it on Instagram with the caption and one more for my quarterback. His jersey number and Glee was number five. So that's the symbolism there. And in September of 2016, Leah did a photo shoot with Women's Health, which was nude. And so we got to see that she actually had another tribute to Corey, a tattoo that says Finn right above her butt cheek in a tasteful way. And it is very interesting that both of her tattoos to commemorate him also have to do with Glee, which makes perfect sense. They met there, a huge part of their relationship and both of their lives was there. In 2019, Leah did marry Zandi Reich. In 2020, Leah posted a tribute to both Naya and Corey. While Naya did not pass away on the 13th, her body was found that day, hence the Glee curse. In 2022, Leah has been doing a tour of life and music and she did talk in one of her performances about how difficult filming the tribute episode was, how real it felt for her, and she does perform Make You Feel My Love, which she performed for the tribute episode in this concert. That is the end of the series. If you enjoyed this, please consider donating to Shatterproof. They work to improve addiction treatment as well as improve accessibility to addiction treatment. And they're also trying to make sure that resources and education on addiction are available to everybody. So this would be a fantastic way to remember Corey and others who have lost their battle with addiction.